The Islamic Republic didn't predict what was going to happen with the post-election unrest. And very quickly, they realized the reason the post-election turmoil was getting attention all over the world was because of the Western media. We were there, and we were showing the pictures, we were telling the stories, and it was a story that captivated the world because it was just such amazing pictures. They were criticizing us for being biased. Uh, in our view, we were just simply covering what was taking place. They uh, told us that we had to leave. And that was quite uh, frustrating to many of us because the story was not over. Uh, the protesters were, were still out in force. They were uh, still being beaten down. We didn't want to focus on the opposition movement. We wanted to tell the story. And there's so many times when we went to the government and said, give us someone. Let, let's talk about this. Let's report this from both sides. And that's truly what we wanted to do. Um, but they wouldn't have it. They wanted us out. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we left. It was very difficult leaving at that time when everything was still, you know, unfolding. You know, I had to get on a plane and leave. We knew that if once we leave or once everyone leaves, that the government would be able to keep uh, a lid on what was happening. Because uh, you have to remember there were no independent media outlets. They were all government-owned uh, uh, outlets. So. It would be difficult for, for the world to see independently uh, what was happening on the ground. I mean, the Western media was shut out within a couple of weeks. So what was left was the Iranians themselves with their cell phone cameras, with their cameras. And man, did they start taking pictures. Did they make up for the lack of journalists on the ground over there? Despite the government, doing what it can to prevent access to the internet and the social networking sites and new technology and new media. These young people in Iran find a way uh, to get access to all these places. There's a 19-year-old girl who I talked to last June when the first demonstrations were starting out and she was sending us photos to iReport and she was very proud to get them out and she was running right up to the security forces getting right up close to them and she'd get beaten by them and then she'd go back home upload her photos and go back out the next day and she gave these tear-jerking interviews where she said you know i used to be afraid but after you're beaten i'm not afraid anymore i've changed over the course of the past week um i think i'm a little braver now because uh, when uh, someone uh, gets hit once the second time i think doesn't matter for me it's like this because uh, when they want to hit me i say hit i have been hit uh, so many times and this time it doesn't matter i just want to help my brothers and my sisters <laughs> the ability of the people to communicate the message and to continue communicating the message through social media even when traditional media were unable to do that has been quite ingenious and to be honest follows a tradition over the last decade or more of Iranians playing cat and mouse with authority playing cat and mouse with censorship playing cat and mouse with all the restrictions on the internet and on the different vehicles of communication it's not by any means a free society so you're risking your life every time you send out a photo every time you write a blog and the, some of the people that I was able to communicate with who were very brave who wanted their names attached to opposition photographs that they were themselves taking and I was cautioning them not to because I didn't want them to get in trouble I've lost touch with them At the moment, it looks like the government has retrenched, has got its uh, house in order, has got the forces behind it. But I think at the very heart, it has been shaken. Because once people start chanting slogans against the top religious leadership, once people take the 
transformative step of challenging power and trying to speak truth to, the po to power. Legitimacy is questioned if power doesn't respond, if power doesn't talk to the people, engage the people, uh, respond to the people. And I think there is a crisis of legitimacy and a crisis of credibility. Some opposition activists describe this as a marathon. They say it's going to take a long time, and the Iranian revolution took a long time. It didn't happen overnight. We're perhaps spoiled by some of the color revolutions that we've seen in former Soviet countries, and in Lebanon, that people go out to the streets and wave flags for, for a few days, and suddenly a government falls. Uh, that's not the case here. We don't know where this is going to go. I think these protests showed people that they have an opportunity to just speak out. So I think it's going to be difficult for them to go back now. What you have here is an opposition movement that's lasted despite one of the harshest and most brutal crackdowns in recent years. Based on that, this isn't a flash in the pan. This is the, the biggest challenge the Islamic Republic has faced in its 30-year history. This is a movement that's real, it's a formidable force, and I think the Islamic Republic knows it. Where it goes from here, it's difficult to say. I think that whatever happens will happen from inside. And like anybody, as an Iranian, what you wish for most is the respect of human dignity, the respect for human rights. The respect for legitimate political process to be the hallmark of, uh, of that country. And I believe that it's going to be really interesting to see how this very dynamic, very young, young country sorts its own political future out.